Thank you very much for coming. <coughs> Excuse me, coming here on short notice. I stand here to t tonight to simply report that the Maine State Police have located the body of Robert Card in Lisbon. He is dead. I've called President Biden to inform him about this news. I've informed <coughs> Senator King, Senator Collins, Representative Pingree, and Representative Golden. Commissioner Sawshuck <coughs> will describe the circumstances of that discovery in some s detail uh, in a few moments. But this discovery is entirely thanks to the hundreds of local, county, state, and federal law enforcement members from all over, and people from other states as well, people who searched <coughs> tirelessly to arrive at this moment. And on behalf of all Maine people, I want to express my profound gratitude for their unwavering bravery and determination and fortitude, and for the leadership of Louis Lewiston Police Chief this is shocking. A revolutionary finding has ophthalmologists scratching their heads in disbelief. Believe it or not, people that try time to heal. And with this search concluded, I know that law enforcement continues to fully investigate all the facts so we can bring what closure we can to the victims and their families. And I ask that all main people continue to keep those families and all of the people impacted by this tragedy in their thoughts and prayers. Lewiston is a special place. This isn't us. Lewiston is a great place. It's a close-knit community of fine people, people with a long history, a history of hard work, of persistence, of faith, of opening its big heart to people everywhere. And tonight, the city of Lewiston and the state of Maine begin to move forward on what will be a long and difficult road to healing, but we will heal together. Thank you, and again, my deepest gratitude, gratitude of all the people of the state of Maine to these wonderful members of law enforcement who came from all over to help us solve this crime and put closure on this investigation. Robert Card is dead. Now I'm going to turn it over to Commissioner Sashuk. Thank you very much, Governor. We truly do appreciate uh, all of your support. Uh, I think it's incredibly important uh, that the next uh, person that speaks uh, this evening is Lewiston's uh, chief uh, law enforcement champion, and that is Dave St. Pierre. Dave. Thank you, Mike, uh, and thank you, Governor, for allowing me this opportunity. Uh, bear with me, please. I, I certainly did not have much time to prepare a speech here. Um, I want to I want to say to everybody, thank you so much. You can our community can now breathe a sigh of relief, as as the governor stated, and I can't echo that enough. Um, our work again is not done here. Um, I, I was very elated tonight when I got the call from Commissioner Sawshuck um, advising me of uh, the revelation of what took place and that Mr. Card is deceased and no longer a threat to our community or any other community. Uh, I just don't want to forget the, the families that are grieving and will continue to grieve. I don't want to forget the law enforcement officials that have worked tirelessly throughout this whole event uh, to come to a good conclusion. Um, our men and women of the Lewiston Police Department, of all of our surrounding agencies, we have with us uh, Chief McGee here from Lisbon where, where Mr. Card was found. Um, this is, in, is vitally important to all of us that this conclusion came to light tonight. Um, we're going to we're going to grieve for the families that lost loved ones here. Uh, we're going to continue to work. We're going to persevere, um, and we become better people for it. Is in in terms of working together as teams. We've learned a lot from some mistakes. Uh, we've we've won a lot of accomplishments this evening. Um, Again, I wasn't really prepared for this on a Friday night at 10:30, but I'm very happy to be here and very happy to say the threat is over. 
Thank you. Sure. So our officers are being notified now as we speak. Um, some know, obviously, sooner than others. There are many that are still home. They're home with their families. And I'm quite certain at this point in time, we all know about this. Um, this is something that all of our law enforcement uh, personnel, ours and any surrounding community, has been pay paying very close attention to in awaiting positive news or good news. And this is by far the, the best news we've had in, in quite some time. Thank you. Was, was, there any, was there any belief at this time that the suspect was dead before finding him, or did this come as a brand new revelation that you never saw coming before this? So our reality here is that the search has been extensive, it's been thorough, it's been nonstop since the minute uh, we started speaking with you and long before that. Uh, so all of these options are on the table as we knew. Uh, we continue to search locations, uh, in some cases multiple times, uh, and uh, we will have more information about exactly how this went down. Uh, we're going to have another briefing tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, uh, and I would uh, please encourage you uh, to think about next steps from your end, information that you uh, would find important. Uh, and uh, I will say that this is not going to be a long Q&A this evening. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we got this information out as fast as possible and as responsible as possible. And what I mean by that is that the time between the notification of the press release and now, there wasn't a lot of details there. There wasn't a lot of details there because we wanted to talk to the victims' families. We wanted to say, this is coming. It's important that they heard that information as close to first as anybody else. And you know who else we called uh, was the family of the suspect. And uh, they lost a loved one in this scenario. Um, and there were many of that family that was very cooperative with us throughout. Uh, so they deserve that phone call. So we had those conversations tonight before joining you here. Uh, we also got a chance to send, spend some time uh, with the brothers and sisters of law enforcement and our public safety partners that have been so incredibly helpful uh, over the last few days, uh, to say the least. So what, one second. So right here, sir. Where exactly did you find him and when exactly did you find him? So at 745 this evening is when uh, Mr. Card was located. I won't give you an exact address. It was uh, near uh, the river along Androscoggin uh, in Lisbon Falls was the actual location. Ma'am, did you have a question? Ma'am, did you have a question? Uh, when do you, when do you please say he died? That all remains to be seen, right? So our reality is that we found that body at 745 and it's 1025 now. Uh, so there continues to be a lot of work that needs to be done here at the scene with the medical examiner's office. Uh, so there's, there's a much, much more follow-up to what happened. But, sir, did you have a question? Um, any indication that he had an accomplice and um, how was he found? I won't be able to answer either one of those questions at this point, uh, accomplices and things of, like, of that nature. We've had no indication of that since the very beginning. Uh, but as we've talked about before, these next steps are going to be, gives us an opportunity to, to do things as fast as we can in the sense that we want to provide closure and information, but also slow things down a little bit uh, because we need to look at video evidence, we need to look at uh, the various uh, pieces of technology that are in uh, play here in hopes that that gives us some additional information around some of the things that you're going to be concerned about. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm happy to take a look at that information in, in hopes that I can get that back to you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, that remains to be seen. Uh, again, we have uh, uh, attorney generals that we need to work with and other individuals uh, that are in play here. I'm going to take a couple more questions again, again with the mindset that it's that it's 10 o'clock tonight, and we do want to come back uh, tomorrow morning to have this conversation. Right here. So you really have shelter in place this afternoon. So by this afternoon, were you just looking for remains? Or, you know, how did you make that decision to lift the shelter in 
Yeah, sure. So I think that um, that was an ongoing conversation since the minute we uh, actually put that in place. Uh, we knew that that was an important decision. Certainly from our perspective, it made uh, complete sense to put that order in place immediately based on the violent nature and the traumatic nature of these crimes. Uh, and as uh, things progressed over the next few days, uh, since Wednesday to now, uh, we've had a lot of conversations with uh, various town and city leadership, uh, with the governor's office, with Chief Secretary. St. Pierre, with business owners, with residents, and we have to have that balancing act of pluses and minuses. And we had that initial surge with those communities, uh, and those communities made perfect sense for an order, and as things tended to slow down, we didn't have any immediate threats, we made the decision to, to back off that. I would also just want to mention this because uh, a fellow commissioner had asked me to do this, uh, and I could walk out of here before forgetting it, but uh, Commissioner uh, Camuso said that, um, and passed along, that actually that hunting restriction uh, has been lifted as well, so the resident hunting opportunity um, for tomorrow uh, is open across the state of Maine to include those four communities. There's a lot of phone calls that she would receive around that. But right here, ma'am. Uh, yes, I can confirm that. It's an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Did you have a question, ma'am? I didn't state that we had searched that area before, so, so. Okay. As, as we have, as we have, as we have stated in the past, we try to use information that we can confirm one way or the other. So your reporting can say something one way or the other, and that's fine. We can talk about that again tomorrow morning. But I think we're done taking questions for this evening. Thank you very much for your thank patience. You and, we'll and and what you know, what happened in his mind. And I think it's very interesting that um, he may have had mental health problems, but he was organized enough to have a plan. And the plan was that he was going to go to certain places, kill people. But before he did that, he, he, he uh, wrote out a suicide note and left things like bank account numbers for his son and, and things like that. So he was he was thoughtful and, and rational uh, in, 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 a, in a deranged way. Um, he then committed the crimes, went back to a place uh, that he probably has some connection to and, um, and, and, and ended his life, which is what he planned to do. And I think that's important to remember here. He had a plan. He executed that plan, and we need to keep that in mind to make sure that we intervene in cases like this as best we can, if it can even happen, considering all of the variables that are out there. Yeah. Ed, this is Chris. Um, on the other side of that equation, you talk about the plan that he had, that he executed. With law enforcement and searches like this, does the discovery of a note, a suicide note, which they found uh, earlier in the search, change the strategy, the modus operandi, whatever it may be in a situation like this? Well, in some ways, they have to cover all the bases, Chris. So they'll continue to, to work on the possibility that he, he got out from underneath the perimeter and he was heading other places. They'll be looking at uh, video on highways. They'll be looking at uh, transactions of credit cards and cell phones and things like that. Um, but it it, it does refocus you on the local angle when you see something like that. You think, all right, he, this may be a ruse. He may be doing this to put us off the trail, but we need to go back and redouble our efforts a, a, in the local area, go back to where he was, walk that path, stay on top of that end of it, uh, and, and to, to make sure that that is totally, uh, totally clear. And, and a, a very similar situation just happened in Maryland with the uh, individual that murdered the uh, the judge there. Um, they, you know, he, he killed himself not far from where they had last seen him, uh, but he managed to secrete himself a little bit and it wasn't easy to find him. So it was great that they that they went back to the basics and, and started over again and, and got this guy.